Hey shiny crafty people and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to teach you another project in our store-bought quilt series. And you may remember that I bought a quilt at Walmart for $29.95 and we've been making all kind of fun stuff with it. And today I'm going to show you how to make a bag to carry your tennis racket in. Isn't that great? You can actually put a couple of different tennis rackets in here and there's even a lovely sort of hidden pocket that allows you to put balls or uh, new gr uh, grips for your racket or other stuff you might need when you're out playing tennis. So please join us over at the big table where I can show you what we need to get started. So one of the important things is to decide what I want the outside of my bag to look like. And I've already sort of figured out that I like this big piece sort of gonna be in the middle of the outside. So I sort of place my racket to where it covers the center of that. And then I'm gonna go out at least an inch or two on either side because I wanna make sure this is big enough for different size rackets. So I've made some marks here, here, using the, the imagery on the, on the actual quilt to show me where to go, up here at the top and one down here at the bottom. And now I'm gonna take a, a straight edge and connect some of those together. So, and I can sort of uh, round this out as I go. I could try to go exactly at the measurement of the of the racket, but I think what that would probably do is um, make it a little too specific to one racket, and I have to recognize that I've got, you know, multiple different types of rackets. I'm gonna probably bring this out a little bit wider just so that I don't have quite such a, a shape, and I might wanna more round it, actually. Round that out a little bit, and then, same thing on the other side is more round. And of course, what I could do is um, cut it and cut one half and flip it over and make sure they, they both kind of match each other. Now, um, I've done that and <laughs> now I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to cut this out again. But I'll use this as my basic shape. I really could have probably um, done a better job of using a different kind of marker for that. So I will, I'll have to, use this as my template and just not use it to make, unless I make one that's gonna be of the fabric on the other side and then that would be fine. So I've, I've sort of wrapped around the entire racket and now I will cut this out and actually use it to find my other pieces. So I'm gonna place it over here on this one and line up the imagery and uh, make sure all of those images kind of line up. And then I'll be able to cut it out using this shape. I need two of these. And the other one I might decide to try to get it out of um, the other color, that sort of uh, that lighter blue, the more, the, the more aquamarine look. So there's that one finished. And I'll see if I can't get the other one out of another part of this particular, maybe right in here. Will it work? Oh, it will. Perfect, okay. I'm gonna do that and then I will come back. So I'm actually gonna make the other one of the opposite material. So I will line this up just using the, the design is the same. So I'll follow the design through. I'm kind of flipping and making sure that the, the shape on the top matches the shape on the bottom, you know? Yeah, and then I can just go in and... Now, if you wanted to, you could pin this on to make sure it was not gonna move around, but I feel pretty confident with this. Then, of course, I'm gonna to have to replicate this with, pardon my head, 
we're gonna have to replicate this with our lining material as well. And then the other thing I'm gonna need to do is make sure that I can cut enough strips that are the same size as this around to make our, our piece and we'll need some straps that will go here. So let's get some of those materials out of here as well. So since I need stri strips on the outside of these to make our width, in other words, our, you know, our, uh, our, ooh, pardon me, our um, tennis rackets will go in between, but I wanna be able to carry two or three tennis rackets, so I need quite a bit of width in here. I need to decide how wide I want this to be. And I think probably a good four inches in there is gonna be good. Four, so I need about um, several, you know, four to five inch width. So this is actually about 10 inches wide. So if I cut this strip here, I cut two five inch strips, I could get a decent amount. Now I have to remember that not only do I need, I need something to go most of the way around this piece. So I'm gonna flip it over to show you what I mean. I'm gonna need to be able to go most of the way around and then stop where we're gonna have a zipper portion that'll open, but I've gotta go all this distance around. So basically I'm gonna need it to go at least, that's three, and this is 27. And I can kind of do some measurements around here. Let's see. Yeah, it's gonna to need to be about 40 inches for this entire, this, this length. And so I've got to get about 40 inches out of this. But I can do that no problem. So what I'll do is I will, um, ooh, it's gonna be fun. Figure out how you want to get that. You could get some out of this piece too that's, that's extra, and I might do that. But I'm gonna have um, those two pieces, and then we'll get two five inch. So I only need really a 20 inch strip here. This is 24. So why don't we just go ahead and get some 24 inch pieces this way. We'll cut across this direction. And you can get that however you need to get it. It's not a problem. Do what you need to do to get it out of there. And then I'll do five inch pieces here. And so this will be pieced together at some point in the middle, but that won't be a problem. I don't think anyone will really notice. Now that would be, it would be important. If it's important to you for it not to be pieced together, then you'd want to cut a full 40 inch piece, but I actually think it'll look fine. So I'm not too worried about it. This stuff's moved around a little bit too. So one of the things I'm doing is kind of getting it under the cutter, uh, the grid here and figuring out how to pull it together exactly straight. So now that we've got both of our side strips pulled together that we're gonna to piece together and each side of the, of the, um, the case, we also need a way to uh, connect that zipper that we're gonna put in. And so um, those will be like this kind of a strip, but with a zipper down the middle. To get that, we need at least, this is a five inch wide piece, if we were to cut it and have the zipper running through the middle, I need at least five inches of material that I'll cut in half, add the zipper in, and then trim to size back to this five inches. So I'm just gonna get a piece of leftover that we have here and cut another five inch by at least, you know, probably at least that same 24 inch piece. So I'll do that here. And I'm just measuring along the side of this device of this um, scrap piece of fabric. Now we're also going to add a pocket like you saw um, at the beginning of this. And so I'm going to get that out of another piece of material as well. And this is kind of the point where I need to decide, do I want to, do I want the side pieces where the zipper is and along the side to be out of the matching material or do I want to use the nice interior color which I think it kind of would be nice to have the balance of that to give it a different color. And the, probably the same thing with the pocket, unless I want the pocket to sort of match the outside here. And I do want a pocket to be able to put things like, um, to put like balls and, and uh, extra grips and other things in. So if I do try to match this particular part right here, that'd be a great place to use the leftover one of those, uh, of the cutout piece. Let me show you. 
So rather than throwing out this one that I had drawn on, I could use this to make our pocket. And uh, that's that would be a fun sort of plan to do. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let me get my, a few details. I'm gonna use not only this, but this extra piece of the fabric at the end here so that we can get a proper overlap. So this will be the flap that closes. This part will be the flap that closes over the pocket that's going to go on. And so, and it'll probably be the near the end here. So let me just go ahead and cut out, I think the pockets, uh, the pocket that we're going to do is about, let me just cut a big chunk of this off. I'm going to make it at least a five inch piece from the end here. There we go. And then we'll trim that to size in just a little bit. So I'm going to go from the center. I'm going to go, um, let me make sure I have the right measurement. I'm going to go about four inches out on either side. So it'll be an eight inch pocket. So I put the center line, the four inch right down the center of that. See if I, I know this is the center, I can put my four inch mark right down through the middle of it and get a line straight across the bottom for my, uh, to be even and then cut off one side. And then I'll have to turn it around and do the same thing the other way. So I'll have to, again, do put my four inch mark right down through the middle, which I've done here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this particular piece here for my pocket. And I want the pocket to go pretty far down there. So I'm just going to put my four inches right down through the middle. Again, kind of mark it off. I'll trim this up. Then I can decide how big I want this pocket to be once I figure this part out. So again, my four inches right down through the middle. So then I can take the outside piece that I've already gotten and I'll have a top that'll go there. And then we will, I'll lay this down the pocket down to match. And let's see if it's gonna overlap in this area, then I can really, I can mark it with my pen. Let's say I want the pocket to, to stop down in this area right here. So I'll just mark it on either side. And then I don't want the flap to go too far over. I wanna be far enough for Velcro to, to attach. So I'll make a mark here as well. Let's see in that area. And I can just match the imagery on either side. So then what I do, and again, you could just measure, if you're not gonna use a, a, a quilt this color or design, you can then just make your own choices. Really just uh, cut out a square that's gonna be, I'll tell you how big this square is, or this rectangle I would say, is eight inches wide by about nine inches tall. And I think it's gonna be big enough for a few tennis balls and uh, I think it'll look kind of cute because this will be the way it closes up right here. Oh, where is it? There we go. All right. So my next job is I'm going to trim this one actually to four inches rather than just five inches. Okay, about four. So that, that will be our pocket piece that will go on. And I, plan, I expect people will carry this around this way standing up like this. So I want the, that pocket to where it doesn't, things don't fall out of it. And it all matches nice and beautiful. Now we will come through here and find a way to edge this. And what I'm gonna do is probably end up, um, I have, we have a couple options. You could with this fabric, take the back off and come back in and stitch it uh, like, you know, take this apart, take out the batting, and then just make it a fabric. But you would lose all that nice, pretty stitching. Instead, I'm gonna get just a, a coordinating fabric and turn it inside out. So we'll see that in just a minute. Let's go to the rest of this design. Now, these are the pieces for the pocket, and I wanna make sure it closes with Velcro. So I'm gonna, I've used some, um, I use some navy Velcro. You can use whatever color you want. White might be really good. Um, I like the navy because it, it matches some of the color in here. Now, on the, 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 on the flap, I need to be, for the Velcro to be on the inside. Now, you could put the Velcro on later, 
but you would then see the stitching through the top here, and I don't really want to see that. And then on the big main pocket, you're going to want it to be on the actual pocket that'll be facing out. So I am going to make sure that I know how these are going to line up to one another, right? I know they're going to line up in this particular way. And then, so I know that I need to put the some of the Velcro in here like this, leaving enough room for the um, for the seam allowance as I stitch around and then turn this. And on this one, it would be fine to, for us to do it actually second, because you're not gonna really see inside. So I'll do that one after I put the two together. For this one though, I will need to make sure that the material that's gonna go on the app, that's gonna go to put this together, I need to put it on the inside of this. So I will no, turn the machine on first. I will choose, this is gonna go like that later, so I wanna make sure that I've got the right side. Yep, I do. And I will leave it more than a quarter of an inch, because that's the seam allowance I'm gonna use around here, so I'm gonna give it a little more like, more like half an inch, and then stitch that on. Now I'm making sure that I do it on the out on the right side of this lining fabric, even though it's never really going to get seen until you flip it up. Um, you got to make sure it's on the proper side of the fabric. So that's there now and relatively centered. I mean, it's not perfect, but <laughs> that's the way it goes. So then I'm going to make sure again that it's that when I put this on, it needs to be on the part that's going to go over the other pocket. So that needs to go underneath there, right? It needs to be facing the pocket. So those two will go together. I'm going to lay them right sides together this way because then we're going to turn it inside out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the opening for that right along this edge here, an opening to turn the whole thing inside out. It'll make it a lot easier. And then I'm just going to use my quarter inch seam allowance to leave, leave an opening because it'll get stitched down when we stitch the entire thing together. And I'll use white thread when I actually put this onto the actual fabric, you know, onto the actual carrier. The white thread will more closely mimic the thread that's already been used to quilt this particular quilt. Again, leaving that hole because then it'll get turned in there. Now the other one I'm going to go ahead and just sew it first and then I'll put this on. Let me make sure I have this flipped the right way. It all matches. And again, I want to I want to leave my opening in an area that's going to get stitched down. So I know this is the this is the top where the pocket will be open. So I don't want to leave the opening there because I don't want to have to stitch again. I'm going to put the opening down here on the bottom or along one of the sides because it will get stitched on three sides before it goes. So just for symmetry's sake, I will do the bottom section. All right, the next step is to turn these inside out, but first I will clip the corners just so there's not so much fabric there since I have, you know, several layers of fabric and an entire layer of batting that's in there. So I just trim really close to these corners so there's not all this extra material trying to lay in there and, and fill up that entire corner that gets turned. You'll notice that I don't cut right to the actual, into the corner of the thread. I don't want to cut the thread because I don't want to actually 
rip through any of that when I turn this inside out. So now it's time to turn this thing inside out and I just find the hole there where I left it open and I, I back stitch at the, the, the beginning and end of that. And then I just turn it inside out here, you know, just get everything turned through. I'm being relatively gentle. I don't really want to manhandle this, although you can. I mean, it really doesn't require you to be too nice to it. I'm just gonna poke with my fingers to get these pieces out. You can use a turner if you're really concerned about the edges being pointy. Um, I'm able to get them really pretty pointy though this way. And then of course I will take this to an iron and give it just a quick steam press to get it flattened. But and I'm saving a little time by leaving this edge. This edge is going to have to get turned back in. That'll actually be stitched down when we stitch the entire thing down because, and so it sort of saves me just a, a, a minute to having to do that. Now I could come back through here when it's time and just give one quick stitch to the top here. And in fact, I will need to stitch the Velcro on here, which actually is the next step. So I might as well just do that. And that'll give this nice a nice top edge here. Now to do that though, at first I have to turn this one inside out as well because I'll have to figure out how far away that has to go. So I have the two sides of the pockets ready and I need to add the Velcro to this part. See, I already have it down underneath here. So I need to just figure out where it overlaps. And I do that by kind of lining it up here. And I realize it's pretty close to the edge. So I'm gonna just come in here and put that Velcro awfully close to the edge. And you could line it up even better if you wanted, but I think that's close enough. And that's gonna give me a little bit of an edge stitch anyway on this that I was looking for. Now the last thing I'm going to want to do is make sure that I give myself a little bit of um, this. I don't need to edge stitch any more of this particular piece because it's going to get sewn down on three sides uh, by when it goes onto the onto the actual carrier, and that'll stitch this opening at the bottom closed. But I do want to make sure that this one, which now is going to go like that, I want this to get stitched down because. It's only gonna get edge stitched at the top here. So I wanna edge stitch the other three sides with white thread. So I'll switch out my th thread in my machine and then I'll show you what that's gonna look like. And we're ready to top stitch this particular one. So I'm just gonna go at the edges. And this part will get sewn in when we attach it to our actual carrier. So now we need to match our pocket onto our carrier, outside of our carrier. And, and I think people are going to carry this uh, with the, the skinnier part near the top of their shoulder. So I want the pocket on place this direction. So I'll put that in place so that it matches up all of the imagery, right? And what I first need to do is turn this edge in. I'm gonna point this in here and um, I could use an iron to do this, but frankly, I'm just going to pull it tight and put a couple pins in it, if I can hold on to them. I could use clips too, but I don't wanna have to take the clips out. I can stitch right up to the pins. Now I'm gonna have to pin through this material to 
to get it to hold down because the clips aren't at an edge. So I'm just sort of looking at it, sort of eyeballing it to make sure it goes on and, and sort of the whole thing disappears, you know? The material kind of blends in and you really can't tell where it stops and starts and I think it's looking pretty good actually. So I'll put a couple pins. I'm specifically gonna pin places where I wanna make sure that the fabric design overlaps. And this isn't gonna be super exact, but eh, it's pretty close actually. Yeah, pretty good. And then our last step will be to, um, these pins where the Velcro is, those aren't gonna come out because we're only stitching around the outside. Then I'll pin the same thing with the top piece. This is the portion that will get stitched down to make the top of the pocket, the flap. So I will put a couple pins in that. And we're definitely gonna edge stitch this down so that it gets held down. And make sure it lines up. Look how nice that looks. It's all fitting together. And this one's only gonna get stitched across the top, not down the sides. All right, so we're gonna stitch that on and then look how nice that'll look. You won't even really see that it's there. I'm gonna stitch the flap first and I'm gonna, it's gonna get a lot of wear and tear. So I really want to give that several stitches to make sure it really holds down. I'm back stitching it quite a bit. I wanna make sure it holds in place and is not going anywhere. And then I can just check it, pull it up, make sure. Yeah, that's holding on really well. Now I'll get it out of my way so that I can come back and stitch. And if you want, you can just pin it out of your way. So that I can stitch here. And I'm gonna really, I mean, I'm back stitching four or five times there. And again, down here, I'm going to just be very careful, make sure you're close to the edge so it closes up that hole. And again, up here at the top, I'm just gonna be really good about back stitching it several times. I wanna make sure that's not going anywhere. And that is the pocket has gone on successfully. I'm gonna take that out and there we go. A pocket on the outside for a couple of tennis balls, a few other pieces, and you can barely even tell it's there. So I've got all my pieces and parts cut out now. Basically I have the side with the pocket on the outside of it and then a matching piece for the other side. So those two pieces are cut. And I also have my strips for the outside as well as for the area that the zipper will go in the middle of. But I also need something to align it with. And I'm gonna align it with this nylon fluid blocker fabric that I use. It's a 420 denier pack cloth. And I'm gonna do this just so that the interior doesn't get dirty or messy. And, uh, and it'll be great in case for any reason you've got sweat on anything you put inside, it can be sprayed and wiped out. And then I cut some strips as well. So the next thing we're gonna do is gonna put this, this uh, really thick um, zipper, you could use any kind of zipper, I'm just gonna use this because what I have in my workshop, into one of the side pieces. And we'll use the aligning piece to go with it. So why don't you join me over at the sewing machine and I'll show you how to do this part. So I've got my long zipper here and then I cut that five inch by 24 inch piece into two, those pieces into two sides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sandwich this zipper in between the two fabrics here. And I have to decide the zipper I want to be on the outside the teeth, obviously. Um, the other side is clearly the interior portion of it. So I want that to be on the outside. So I'm gonna place 
my outside fabric face down. Now I like this particular look for the outside. I'm gonna do a two-toned look, so I'm gonna place that face down. So this will be the wrong side of the fabric. I'll put the zipper on the right side of the fabric of this back material. I will put this down with the right side now facing. So all the right sides are facing each other. And I'm gonna come through and use a few clips to hook this together as we go down. And you could clip first the, uh, the zipper and I'll do that. I'll just clip the zipper first on and then transfer the clips over. And in fact, if you feel more comfortable, you could stitch the zipper on first and then stitch the other fabric to the top of this new unit that you've built. Actually, let me do that. I think that might be a more interesting way because zippers are, are hard to do. They aren't the easiest thing. And so I'm just gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm not really worried about how the zipper will look because I know it's gonna be kind of industrial. This would be a good place to use a guide on your machine if you needed it. That would be one of these sort of metal guides that can be screwed onto the machine. And that'll keep you from do it going over your quarter inch seam because you wanna be kind of, kind of specific. So now that I've got that sewn down, I can then turn this again with the right side, with the, the side I want to be facing out eventually, straight down and sew this again. Now, this quilting fabric can be a little stretchy. So I'm just gonna try to make sure that I don't stretch it out as I go along. And the good part is, is that if it were on the bottom where the feed dogs are pulling through, it might get stretched out. But since it's not, I, it shouldn't be a problem. It's not face down. And I've cut this a little bigger than we actually need it to be. I don't know that we really need 24 inches. So now if I open that up and open this piece up, now we'll see what our finished side will look like on one part of it. Now what I'm gonna go through now is open that completely up, really pull out that, that fabric here like this, really finger press it down so it's really wide open. And then I'll flip it over and do the same thing along the top for this fabric. And then I go ahead and go in and give this a top stitch to stitch it down. I'll need to take the guide off for that part. And there you go, that's one part of that. And now I'm going, so now I'm gonna go through and do the same thing on the other side, which is stitch it right sides together, you know, the back side of the zipper to the blue. And of course I've got the shiny part of that blue fabric facing up, cause that's gonna be the right side of it. And again, you could use the, the guide if you wanted to. I've actually been sewing zippers like this for a very long time. And in my main uh, business that makes products for funeral homes, we do a lot of this actually, uh, zippered stuff. So I tend to get a little more, I'm a little more comfortable doing it. Now, I may not want to see that original line of stitching that I just put down, so I might go a little bit bigger than a half inch or a quarter inch seam allowance. Here, I'm just going to a little like a sixteenth of an inch more so that maybe I'll miss that as I come through. And again, we're going to trim this once it's opened up. So I can open this part up. Oh, I put it on wrong. Look at that. So I need to take that off. I like to leave in these mistakes uh, for you, even when I, you know, when I make a mistake and think, oh, what a terrible idea. I like to leave them in because I think it helps for you to see that, you know, not everyone does everything perfectly. And even, even people who have YouTube channels occasionally go, oh, that was a terrible idea. Why did I do that wrong? I will also tell you, um, 
I've never actually made one of these perfectly the first time. So this is a pretty new project. I came up with this idea. I was getting stuff out of my car. Uh, it was funny. I was getting stuff out of my car. Remember, right sides together. I should have paid attention to that. I was getting some stuff out of my car and I had my tennis racket in the back of my car because I play tennis with a good friend of mine at least once a week or so. And I thought to myself, I don't have a bag for my tennis racket. Now I'm not gonna use this one um, because I have somebody else in mind to give it to. But I thought to myself, oh, wait a second. I could make a bag because these things aren't cheap. I don't know if you've priced any uh, tennis bags lately, but they're not cheap. All right, again, the same thing. Open it up really well. Kind of finger press it open, which I'm doing here. And you could put some pins in this if you wanted to to make sure it was opened really well. So I'm gonna finger press it open and then come here and finger press the top open and top stick. Now we're gonna cut this to size, not only to length, but we're gonna cut it to width because we only need this to be five inches wide to match those other strips. So we don't want it to be wider. So in fact, we've made it a little wider the way we've done this because it's a pretty wide zipper. If you're using a thinner zipper, of course, you may not do that. You may actually need to cut this original one a lot bigger. But there's our section that's gonna go in with our zipper. And what I'm gonna come and do next is put in the uh, zipper pull and because uh, this is a strip of, of zipper. You, if you had one, it would just be in here while you were sewing. And then I'll put that in and we'll go ahead and add the fabric to the ends. Well, I've trimmed this to five inches by that 24 to get the edges trimmed. And then we're gonna put the pieces, other pieces on. So we will add one to this end and flip it out that way, one to the other end and flip it out the other direction and to trap all those, wrong way, we'll do it <laughs> this way, right sides together. And then on the back, we'll also add the same thing so that all of it gets trapped together. So in fact, what I'll do is I'll line this up here at the end and I will, again, make sure my right sides are together and I'll use some clips to clip that together clip this other one together. Now there's gonna be a lot of bulk right in this area, but I'm not that worried about it. It'll, it'll all work out. And then I need to do the same thing on the back side with this piece of material, shiny sides together, and just move those pins or the, the, the clips. I wanna add a clip in the middle too. Let me get that on. I'll add a clip there in the middle. So that's one side on that'll open up. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Now it's good that actually that I changed this to where I have, uh, I don't do one big long piece because actually it's gonna work out better. Cause I don't know how long this entire thing needs to be. And this is gonna allow me to attach those pieces together once we figure out how big the entire thing needs to be. because we're not doing like a rectangle or a square where I could just measure all four sides. We're doing this unusual shape. So a lot of it's gonna depend when we finally all pin it together, how long these actual materials need to be. And here on the top, we'll put that together. We'll do the middle one first. And again, we're putting the right sides together that are gonna be stitched together. And then I'll go through and put a stitch down through each of these. I'm gonna use a little wider stitch than a quarter of an inch because with that zipper pulling against this, I don't want it to rip anything out. So I'll do that in the machine really quick and we'll go to the next part. We are sewing over the top of a zipper in here, so I'm gonna be really careful as I do that. And now that covers that open. And I'll just go ahead and open this up and give it a little bit of a top stitch, just like we did on the other parts. I just think it makes it look finished. So we'll top stitch that down. And again, going really slowly over the zipper. 
helps use a little longer stitch length when you're doing this part. And again, I'm using about almost a half inch seam allowance of done between three eighths and a half. Again, slow over the zipper, really. I can't emphasize that enough. Pull all those pieces out, really get them nice and, nice and flat. we have created our zipper, our zippered opening. So now we're gonna attach the this to these parts. And the reason I created it this way is we're going to lay these fabrics together, figure out where we want our zipper to go, how we want that to fit in there. And it's gonna to need to twist around, obviously. And then we're going to Let's say we layered it that way. We'll then layer this fabric on top and stitch all the pieces together. And that way we don't see any of our seams. We'll leave just one section open where it will come through. And the only other thing we need to do is make sure we put our handle on it at this time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure how far this particular part is here and add some extra space so it can go over your shoulder. So in fact, if I measure this on my table, I'm gonna step away from the visual screen where you can see me. It's about 30 inches, but I made if I made this at about 40, it would give me an extra 10 inches for it to go up over my shoulder. Maybe I would go to 45 to give it a little bit more. So I'm gonna make a piece of uh, a handle that's gonna be about 45 inches long to go in this area. And then it'll get sandwiched in here before we sew all this together. So for a handle, I've just taken a, a long 45 by three inch strip of this material and I will basically put the two materials together and stitch it all the way down. Then I'm going to turn it inside out. And for this I've decided to use the cute fabric on the other side, you know, just to mix it up a little. There's a lot of design choices to make here. Like I'm gonna use this as my outer fabric because it's gonna lay against the bag, but I could have used the other as well. It's just a, a personal choice of what you think is gonna look best. And then once I turn this completely inside out, I am gonna come back through and um, top stitch the edges down so that it's not like a poofy sleeve, you know? I don't want it to just be this sort of poofy snake kind of a thing. I really want it to have a, a, a flatter look. And I'm building this in advance because it's, then it's gonna get, get, um, it's gonna get sandwiched into the edges.
right, so here I've got to decide how I want to put this thing together. I know that I'm sandwiching the the handle in here, so the handle's going to get sandwiched in here. So I know I can go ahead and and give that a uh, a little clip in here right at the top. Just hold that in place, and I can sandwich it at the bottom too. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, hook it in there for both the top and the bottom. And I'll probably give it a little once I once I clip it in here. I'm going to give it a a pinned uh, just to keep it out of the way so it doesn't get on uh, get stuck in anything. I'll just sort of pin it out of the way here, just to keep it from messing anything else up. So I'm sort of going to build my layers of this device. I put that in, then I've got to put my part with my zipper in, and when the zipper opens, you kind of push the you push your your racket in, but see, it's not as big as the racket is, so you've got to make sure that the racket can get in all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it come around the top area so you can slide the racket in and over. So I know I need to start it right about where that, uh, right about where the handle starts. So I'll just layer this up there too. And use the same clip to clip all those pieces together. I'm going to use a wider stitch length on this too as I put it together. And then I'm going to sort of work this around with my clips. And just sort of work it in the, the turning the corners of this as we go. And again, like I said, I'm going to use a nice wider stitch length as I put this, uh, not a stitch length, a wider seam allowance to make sure it actually holds on. Because if I try to do a quarter inch seam allowance, it'll never, it'll never catch everything. I'll, I'll make a mistake somewhere. Now this isn't the only layer we have to do. Remember, we still have to come in and do that lining layer against this. So I need as many clips as I need to, to get this going. Now along these straighter edges, it gets a whole lot easier, right? Because it's just a straightaway. And I'm gonna keep going down the entire side of this. Line it up. The clips are nice for this because they're real easy to reposition on like, unlike pins that you can't quite do that with. The only negative is gonna be is I'm gonna run out of clips in a minute. I only have so many of them. So I'm not gonna worry about the straight edges as much now because I have pins I can do with that. And then I'll use the clips when I'm gonna round the other edges. This is a pretty long project. I kind of get that idea, but I mean, I think it's actually pretty intricate. If you think about if you were making these, you know, for a living, I mean, can you imagine what it's like in a factory where they make these? Obviously they get really good at it, but somebody has to develop all these pieces and parts. Let's get back around to the top here and keep going with this shape. Now, what ha what's gonna happen is we're going to do this with on this particular side of it. And when we put the, when we sandwich this down and put the navy fabric on top, right? Uh, then we're going to be able to stitch that and open it up in one area for the other parts to come through. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this. And then at the end, what you see, when this comes back around and works its way around, then these two will connect to one another. And they're actually going to be pretty close in the, at the right size. So I'm going to finish this and then show you how to add the other fabric on top.
So I've made that entire sandwich. I'm gonna stitch almost all the way around and leave a little opening for myself so that I can turn this inside out and then this will get, hand, get stitched back later. So again, I'm gonna use a much wider stitch than I would normally use, almost a half an inch, between half an inch and three eighths. I'm just gonna peel those clips off as we go around. Now you gotta remember we're going through a lot of layers here. So it does not hurt to spend your time and go nice and slow. And in fact, some people, I think I've seen some people that would do this as stitching it twice. Stitch the, the one layer down, the two layers down first and then come back along and pin this layer, much like we did with the, the um, original zipper. I'm just getting sort of impatient, and uh, you can tell because it's, it's making me work faster on this. But I can sort of feel the finished product coming, so I'm getting really excited by it. Down here, the corners are kind of fun because I've had to put a lot of fabric into those corners, and we're going over the handle as well, so I'm going to give it a little more love down there really hit this corner better. And again, I have to remember to leave myself that opening along the side. So I can turn this whole thing inside out. And I'm gonna leave it pretty big actually, because I have a lot of material to turn inside out. Making sure I back stitch it at the beginning and end of that. Okay, I sewed over a few pins, please excuse my bad choice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open this whole thing up. And again, hopefully I've left enough to be able to turn it. I think I'll turn this skinny portion first. And I have a handle in there that I can reach in and use partially to help turn this. Now remember, I have a pin in there holding that handle in place, so don't, if you do that, don't reach in too hard and hurt yourself. Now you're gonna see some unfinished edges coming out, and that's because we've only done half of this piece. Remember, we only have half of this done. So we're gonna have to do the same thing again and birth it another time. So let me take that pin out from the handle. This can help start pulling some of that fabric out. And maybe you'll leave a bigger opening than the than the six or so inches that I left in, but it's really starting to birth itself out here. Aha. Yeah, there we go. And there's that space that I that I left open to turn it inside out. But look, it's creating that shape of our bag. So we can pin the other side on and stitch it together too. Now, before I lay add these other two layers, I have to decide how I wanna close that opening. I could hand stitch that, but I think I'd like a top stitch all around this entire piece. And so I think I'll go ahead and do that now. That'll top stitch this entire thing down and then I'll close up this hole as well. So I'm gonna go to the machine and do that first before I add the other layer. All right, so now I've, I've gotten my last bit of pieces together. I'm stitching around the entire bottom edge again. This is the final sort of step to get all the pieces put together. And then I'll top stitch the entire thing again and we'll be pretty much be done. That's what's amazing is I'm gonna top, I've already top stitched up, you'll see. I went ahead and top stitched this part in here. So now I'm kind of putting the last bit of pieces together. What I like about the way this is going together, um, and I've actually just done it completely wrong again. So this is the part that can get quite confusing. I've got, I've basically started pinning on, pinning the pieces together. Once I finish pinning this, then I have to put the blue on. Now I've already done this wrong. I did it this way and realized, oh, that's not right. I've got to do it 
this direction and then berth it all out. So what I'm going to do is shove all of this stuff down in and get it sandwiched between that last lining piece and that fabric piece. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to basically line it up and get it done correctly. And then I'll be ready to sew it together. And before I turn this inside out, I really want to make sure that I go through and double check that it caught everything on the other side. I really I don't want to have mixed it because it's pretty thick now. There's a lot going on in here. And I just want to make sure I don't miss any parts of it. Now, I went very carefully over my pins when I sewed this. And I sewed over the pins mostly because I didn't want this to come apart at all. Especially down here at the end where there's so much bulk shoved in there. You know, I really want to make sure. So it feels like all of it was brought in. So now I'm going to put my hand inside again and find the pin that's holding the... Oh, got to reach it with my hand in here. The pin that's holding the, oh, the handle in place. So if I pull that out, that pin out, now I'm not worried about hurting myself as I turn this inside out again. And again, I'm going to grab in here... And I'll wrestle this, all these parts inside out. And again, I could have left a little bit bigger opening, <laughs> especially since now I have a pocket to shove through there as well, and that's a little bit more material. But it, it is all coming. I can and I can pull with the pull that pocket or that that handle to get a lot of that material out. And it's coming through though. I mean, look at it. Ooh. Gotta really just work it. I'm actually enjoying this project a lot. I was surprised. I, I kind of felt like these, these are bigger projects. These are a little harder than some of the other things. I mean, this is a big, a long way away from a placemat. Oh, look at that. All right, so that's now been birthed in the open. And now I have to close this part up. And to get to that, I'm going to open up the zipper, right? And that's going to let me go through and top stitch this entire thing. So let's do that first, and then I'll show you the finished product. And here's the finished bag. Look at this. Isn't this the cutest thing? Look at it. With the handle at one side. And it's uh, completely lined on the inside. And there's that pocket that we made. Uh, so now I have my... Let me take it down and I'll show you what it looks like when it's actually put together. Here's the bag finished. With the handle under there and the pocket. And look at this. All right, who's ready for some doubles? This was such a fun project to make. So much fun to be able to create a carrier bag for a for a couple of rackets. I had just the best time doing it and I hope that you enjoyed it as well. Nice long video, but it shows you step by step. And if you liked this video, please like it. It helps with the algorithms for us to be seen by more people. And subs consider subscribing to the channel. That way you'll see whenever I make new videos. And of course, you can also share all the amazing stuff that you make on our Facebook page. The link is down in the description below. So until next time, stay crafty. Bye for now. All right.
Time to call Gerald and get some tennis going.